Buddy, you want to come play? And they go, Please stand. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. And hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of life. Who try 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah. 
please kneel. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so does he remove our transgressions from us. Merciful God, we confess we've sinned against you in thought, in word, and in deed. By what we have done, by what we left. We've not loved you with our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We're truly sorry. Now hear this good news. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord is here. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. A reading from the book of 1 John. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. 
This is the message which we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With the trumpet and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills sing for joy together. Before the Lord, before he comes to judge the earth, he will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. Please stand. By your word were all things made, the whole the earth. The sky and sea, and in you they are sustained. The woods speak words of life to me. By the light of your word, we have sight. It lights our way at your. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Lord, you, Lord Christ. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when they had said this, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, 
These are the words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. By your word, we are fed. It is true, it gives us life, and this life's the light of men. Lord, speak words of life to me. More precious than gold, or Let's pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you. Blessed you are, Lord, great God, eternal majesty on high, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, O God, our pure delight, our greatest joy and holy happiness. Pour out now your Holy Spirit, the inner witness, the spirit of truth, that the covenants of the patriarchs the visions of the prophets and the testimonies of the apostles might be for us the way of life. Pour out now your Holy Spirit that we might live in you and you in us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. may be seated. Well, this morning I'd like to focus our time together in the gospel reading that was just uh, read, Luke 24, 36 through 49, and I want to draw your attention to a little phrase in verse 36 that it says, he himself stood in their midst. He himself. 2,000 years ago on a Sunday morning, early in the morning, Jesus rose from the dead, and it was a glorious appearing, a glorious appearing. On Friday, his lungs stopped breathing, but on Sunday morning, his lungs started working again. Air entered into his lungs, and oxygen from that air moved to his blood. At the same time, carbon dioxide, a waste gas, moved from his blood to the lungs, and he exhaled. He breathed out. He defeated death with his very breath, and it was a glorious appearing. On Friday, his heart stopped pumping. But on Sunday morning, the right side of the heart began to receive blood that was pumped into the lungs where it picked up a fresh supply of oxygen. The blood then returned to the left side of the heart, ready to be pumped back out to the brain and the rest of the body. It was a glorious appearing. On Friday, his brain stopped working. But on Sunday morning, his brain and all four lobes started working again. His brain controlled thinking and planning and processed things like taste and temperature. It was a glorious appearing. Not only his brain, but his eyes began to see. He had been to death and came back and he could see the world. The world that had been made through him. That all of creation is held together by the very power of his word. And he could see the trees and the birds and the grass And all the people who were made in his image, it was a glorious appearing. And his ears started to work again. He could not only see the birds in creation, but he could hear them. On Friday that stopped, but on Sunday he could hear the sounds of picking himself off the burial slab and folding the linen burial cloth. 
not only his ears, but his mouth started working, and he could say things. And not only could he say things, but his hand started working, and he could hold things. He could hold the whole world in his hand, and he holds salvation in his hands, and he holds you in his hands. It was a glorious appearing. And his feet, his feet started moving, and he could walk to places. On Friday, he was stuck. He was nailed He was out, but on Sunday he could walk around. Not even a heavy stone could keep him down. He had people to go and places to see. Places to go and people to see. (laughs) Just remember not to criticize me, because I may come to your job one day and criticize you. (laughs) You don't want that. I'm teasing, I'm teasing. You can criticize me. See, his brain started working, and his heart started feeling, and his hand started holding, and his eyes started feeling, and his legs started walking, and he defeated every power of the sting of death. It was a glorious appearing, and all in that phrase in verse 36, he himself stood in their midst. He himself, in verse 39, it says, it is I myself. James Edwards, in his commentary on Luke, says the crowning effect of the resurrection is not a that. It's not just that it's a mighty work of God, a victorious miracle over in life and death, but it's really a who. The revelation of Jesus as the suffering Messiah, now glorified by God as eternal Lord. The disciples were startled and frightened. They thought they were on an episode of Ghost Hunters. They were troubled And a lot of them most likely depressed and full of trauma. What happened to them was traumatic. And they had dispersed and forsaken their rabbi, the Savior, at some point in the previous week. And in the midst of their despondency, he himself appeared. It was a glorious appearing. This is a glorious appearing. And what does Jesus say when he gloriously appears to this ragtag group of fearful disciples? Peace be to you. It's a glorious appearing that came with a gentle word. A gentle word. Peace be to you. These Jewish disciples would have understand, understood the Jewish idea of God's peace as wholeness, comfort, God's blessing. But we have to remember these are frail disciples. Peter, just a few days earlier, he denied Jesus three times. Even now, they aren't believing. It's too good for it to be true is what Luke points us to. They're not believing. They haven't put together the whole picture of what God can do and is doing, and in their state, they're full of doubt and trouble. They're fearful. And in the midst of their despondency, their feebleness, their frailty, Their lack of certainty, he gives the gentle word in his glorious appearing, peace be to you. Some of you might be in this room, well all of you are in this room, but some of you in this room, you may not believe in the resurrection like I've described it. Or maybe you have friends who think Christianity is not true, it doesn't fit, the resurrection does not fit into their worldview They're too sophisticated. And I don't mean that as a put down. I just mean the resurrection is mysterious and wonderful. It doesn't fit into our worldview. It didn't fit into their worldview. They're scared in a room. It, It doesn't fit. And you're not sure what you believe. And in today's culture, words like evangelical or even Christian have been co opted by political powers. And when you see or hear things that are said about the word Christian or evangelical, you think, that's not who I am. And as a result, you're not really sure where you belong. Or maybe you have church hurt, real hurt that the church has caused. You've gone through things you did not ask to go through, did not expect to go through. You feel frail and feeble because doctrine has always been used as a weapon to hurt and shame and guard. And so you're not really sure about Christianity. Or maybe you come each week because you like a little bit more formal liturgy than what you've had in the past. You like that we do the same thing every week and that when you come to church there's no surprises. But it's been a long time since you talked to God, read his word, prayed, taken communion. Not just taken communion, but taken in communion in faith that Christ is somehow wonderfully present. 
in the sacrament. You're here, but you're not really here. Or maybe you're here this morning and you feel like God has been silent for a long time. Miscarriage. Job and income loss. Medical diagnoses that can't be cured. Maybe you've had the kind of hurt that has gotten into your soul. It's affected your soul. It's not just a dark night of the soul. It's more like a dark decade of your soul. The pain is real. Depression is the constant friend, and it is overwhelming. You've gone through, through things that have not only humbled you, but you've been humiliated. As we enter into the story of Jesus, to these frail disciples, and we join them in the room, I want to tell you what Jesus told them in your despondency and weakness and frailty, in your feeble state and depression, Peace be to you. He says the gentle word. There's no derision in his voice. No shame for their failures. No shame for the last 36 hours. No condemnation. No regret. No shame. In fact, it's not really just a gentle word. It's really a gentle presence. Peace be with you because I am with you. My scars and all. Touch it. Do you see? Do you see my scars? Touch it. I'm here. I'm here for you. Peace be with you because I am with you. Isabel, our youngest, is five. And over the last couple weeks, because Easter was coming up, we've been talking about resurrection, heaven. Jesus is coming back. We're all going to go there one day. So we have to love Jesus and he will take care of us. We follow him. Well, this past Monday night, she came out of her bedroom about an hour after bedtime, just crying, alligator tears, sobbing, very distraught. Deborah and I asked her, what is wrong? And she said, when Jesus comes and takes me to heaven, I'm going to miss you. She had a piece of it, but the whole thing had not connected for her yet. Now, as her dad, who knows more than she does, I could have been mean to her and ask her why her mother and I are not in heaven too. What, what's wrong with that picture? <laughs> she is a rude little five-year-old girl to cast us out into outer darkness. <laughs> but I didn't do that. We were very tender with her because she had the pieces to the puzzle, much like the disciples. But she couldn't quite put it all together of how is that going to work out. And the disciples here, they've got the pieces to the puzzle. Or maybe you, with when it comes to Christianity and your walk with the you've got pieces to the puzzle. But you're just not quite sure how everything comes together and how it works out. Jesus, instead of theologizing and giving a lecture... He gives a gentle word and his gentle presence, and he says, peace be with you, because I am with you. I'm with you. That's your theology, disciples. I'm with you. If you find yourself in a tough spot wrestling with doubts about Jesus or his resurrection, please take the same word as we enter into this room with the disciples. Peace be with you. Much like a father and mother to his worried children, Jesus says to you this morning, you have peace because you have me. It's going to be okay. And it's not just going to be okay. It's going to be better than okay. Jesus came with a glorious appearing. He gave a gentle word. And then he wants to send them and really us out on a great mission. Look at verses 44 through 48 again. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Notice here what Jesus is doing, how he is handling Scripture. He says, you're witnesses of these things. What things? That the Messiah, the King of Israel, would suffer and die and rise from the dead, and how this was fulfilled in the totality of Scripture, from the law 
law to the prophets to psalms, from the law to the prophets to poetry, from the story of Israel to the wisdom literature, to the law, to the, to the, the covenant-keeping nature of the people of God, what separated them, the totality of the story of God, Jesus is interpreting for them that he is the focal point of the story of God. Verse 45 says that he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He's saying, not only am I the fulfillment of this story of God, I am actually the final interpreter of this story of God. He shows them that the story of God is about him and his reign as king of Israel. And as a result, the whole world, in order that repentance for forgiveness of sins, would be proclaimed in his name to all nations. And that Jerusalem would be the catalyst for this reign of God in Christ. Loved ones, this book properly read is all of life. But it is fulfilled by Jesus, interpreted by Jesus. We could even say it is interpreted by Jesus and interpreted through Jesus. Hans Boersma calls this the hidden presence of Christ in Scripture. When you and I read the Bible, we need to ask where Jesus is there because he is all throughout the Bible. The Bible is Christocentric and it is Christotelic. It is pointing to Christ and it is pointing through Christ. See, in Genesis, Jesus is the seed of the woman who promised to crush the, the head of the serpent. In Exodus, he is the Passover lamb. In Numbers, he is the shepherd. In Deuteronomy, he's the better Moses who leads his people to an everlasting promised land. In Joshua, he is the conqueror. In Ruth, the kinsman redeemer. First Samuel, Jesus is the changer of hearts. And in Second Samuel, he is the one who accomplishes in 1 Kings, he is the giver of life. And in 2 Kings, he gives sight to the spiritually blind. In 1 Chronicles, Jesus is the one who ends up reigning forever. And in 2 Chronicles, he is the one who pays the price. In Ezra, he is the cornerstone of an everlasting temple. In Nehemiah, he is the one who gives his people purpose. In Esther, he is the rescuer. And in Job, Jesus is the perfect sufferer. In Psalms, he is the fulfillment of prophecy and praise. In Proverbs, he is the wise person. In Ecclesiastes, he is the true identity for all of humanity. And in Song of Songs, he is the bridegroom. In Isaiah, he is the counselor. And in Jeremiah, he is the, the purifier. Lamentations, Jesus represents the hope. And in Ezekiel, Jesus is the reason dead men live. In Daniel, he is enough. And in Hosea, he is the one who buys back his people. In Joel, he is the sender of the Spirit. In Amos, he is the way for adoption. In Obadiah, Jesus is Mount Zion. In Jonah, Jesus cast himself into the true storm of sin. In Micah, he is the house of bread. In Nahum, he is the comfort from God. In Habakkuk, Jesus is the dispenser of justice. In Zephaniah, he is the presence of God. In Haggai, he is the precious one. In Zechariah, he is the branch of David. In Malachi, he is the Lord in his temple. In Matthew, Jesus is represented as the sufficiency for all worry. In Mark, he is the seed. In Luke, he is Emmanuel. In John, he is the word. In Acts, Jesus is our ascended Lord. In Romans, he is the present reality. In 1 Corinthians, Jesus is the message. In 2 Corinthians, Jesus makes dead men into new creations. In Galatians, he is the one without beginning. In Ephesians, Jesus gives us purpose. In Philippians, he is true and pure humility. In Colossians, Jesus is the image of our invisible God. In 1 Thessalonians, Jesus is the resurrected Lord. In 2 Thessalonians, Jesus is the returning champion. In 1 Timothy, he is the giver of grace. In 2 Timothy, he is greater than any of our momentary affliction. In Titus, he is grace and truth. In Philemon, Jesus is the unifying construct. In Hebrew, Hebrews, Jesus is the perfecter of our faith. In James, he is the one who perseveres. In 1 Peter, Jesus is our inheritance. In 2 Peter, he's the word. In 1 John, Jesus is true and living. In 2 John, he is the gospel. 
In 3 John, he is truth personified. In Jude, Jesus is the one who has always been. And in Revelation, Jesus is our King of kings and Lord of lords. The whole, the whole... You, you all are clapping just because you're Anglican and you like lists and order, okay? I, I get it. As Alistair Begg says, in the Old Testament, Jesus is incarnated. No, let me get that. He's predicted. I'm going to get it one day, Robert. In the Old Testament, Jesus is predicted. In the Gospels, incarnated. In the Acts, he is preached. In the Epistles, he is explained. In Revelation, our Savior is expected. Don't divorce yourself from the Old Testament because Jesus does not divorce himself from the Old Testament in Luke 24. I grew up, some of you grew up with me in a context we had things called New Testament Christians, right? New Testament Christians. And yet, I don't really, I mean, I know what they meant because we're under a law of grace instead of like the, I I get what they're saying, but Jesus doesn't treat it like that. There is one story of God, a covenant of God among his people with Christ as the center and he is this Passover lamb who takes away the sin of the world and he is fulfilled in the Old Testament. As a side, someone asked me where I got that list and I'm not the first one preacher to have a list like that, but Several years ago, I think I, I, D.M. Lloyd-Jones had really long sermon series, but I preached a 66-week sermon series one time. And I had the privilege of going through every book of the Bible, seeing where Christ is at. Not looking for every, like, dot and tittle of, like, where's Jesus in this? And, but the overall picture of Jesus is that he is the one in Scripture. And the fullness of this is that he sends his disciples, not just these disciples, but all of us, on a great mission to actually bear witness to this story of Jesus. Some of us get really worried about things like evangelism, and even when it talks about forgiveness of sins, and I know that can be a little overwhelming and nervous. uh, But let me invite you, just talk about Jesus. And share the story of Jesus. People today, every time this year, every time I'm in like Walgreens, I didn't see them this year because I wasn't looking, but almost every year there's still magazines about Jesus around Easter. There's still TV shows about Jesus around this time of year. People are still, I think, interested in Jesus. They may not be interested in all the things that are sometime come along with, with us in the 21st century, but I do believe people are still interested in talking about Jesus I had the opportunity this week at work to talk to my one of co-workers about Jesus. Just about Jesus, who he is and what he does. How wonderful he is. He's the fulfillment of the story. For some of us, we get uncomfortable because we might have grown up with really what I would consider a Christless Christianity. Where repentance for forgiveness of sins, it's really just nothing more than like sin management. Quit sinning. You know, that, that's the essence of what Christianity is. Quit sinning. Stop. Don't do it. Which, not sinning, that's a good thing. It's part of it. Sin is what separates us from God. But I think the call here from Jesus to proclaim this forgiveness of sins, the repentance for the forgiveness of sins, it's much richer and deeper than that. Because you can quit drunk drinking, drunkenness, and not fear God. You can quit pornography and not for, uh, fear God and love the Savior, Jesus Christ. You can quit sinning and still not have your life and your heart and your soul under submission to the King of kings and Lord of lords. You can quit lots of things and still not fear God, still not have Christ as King. He offers you the gift of salvation in his lordship, and you reciprocate the gift with your allegiance to him. You repent. We don't just need to quit sinning. We need forgiveness, which is only offered to you in Jesus, to be completely forgiven and free. This message is a great mission to get people to turn to him and see him as the reigning and resurrected Messiah fulfilled in the Bible. Our mission, Jesus says, is to all nations which means Jesus is offering us something deeper than just a new way to be religious. He's saying he is king and lord of all. 
He's subverting all worldly powers to say that he is the final one in charge. And the only way to do this, as Luke notes for us as, as he quoted Jesus, is in the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 49 says, you are clothed with power from on high. You've got to have Holy Spirit power. You can't do this on your own. You're incapable. You disciples, you're incapable of doing this on your own. But the Holy Spirit is going to come. I mean, do you remember Peter on the day of Pentecost? That guy? Do you remember? He was walking on the water one time, and then he fell in the water, and then he walked on the water. And then, I mean, he's young, early 20s. And on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 were added to the church. And he stood up among those, he's a fisherman, he stood up amongst those people and he said, men of Israel, you killed Jesus. He didn't even give an invitation. They had to ask, what do we do? I mean, Peter was just done. He said, you killed Jesus. And he gave him the story of God. He preached from Joel and the Psalms. And then he stopped. And they said, brothers, what are we going to do? They were cut to the heart. And Peter said, well, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. You'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. About 3,000 were added to the church that day. You think Peter did that? Peter, that guy, what, drowning in water, saying, Jesus, I'll never forsake you. And then just a few days later, Jesus, who's, I don't know Jesus. That guy knows the Holy Spirit that worked through the word of God to the hearts of the people. You and I do not have the capacity. Paul, when he went to the church at Corinth, let me say this, because I, I need to wrap up. Sometimes, um, you ever been to like a restaurant that had a theme? And like, maybe like an aquarium? And you're like, oh, this aquarium, oh my, this rest, I can't, it's got an aquarium, all these fish. And loved ones, if they actually took away all the ambiance and you left with what was just on your plate, would you still want to eat there? We have a message, and we do this in certain ways. I mean, really the best way in my opinion, but we do this in certain ways. But if we took all the stuff away, would you still be satisfied with what's on your plate that Christ, he opened, he, he is the, is Jesus enough is my question. Is Jesus enough? Let him be enough, St. Andrew's Church. Let him be enough. He gloriously appeared. He gave a gentle word. And then he asks us to join him in his great mission. And I hope you'll be amazed at him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From our faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. <laughs> Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Please kneel for the prayers of the people. Lord God, our ruler, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to your merciful care. We ask that being guided by your providence, we may dwell securely in your peace. Grant to our mayor, our governor, 
our president, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with a love of truth and righteousness. Make them always mindful of the calling to serve this nation and its people in reverence before you. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops, Philip Jones, Robert Cook, and Sospeter and Denza, the Anglican Mission Council of Bishops, and on the congregations they serve, your life-giving spirit of grace. The continuing refreshment of your blessing. O God, creator and preserver of all the world, we humbly pray that you will reveal your ways to people of every kind and type and your saving power to all nations. We pray for your church that it may preach the gospel with clarity and that it may be guided and governed by your Holy Spirit. We pray that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. We commend to your fatherly goodness all those who are in any way afflicted or distressed in mind, body, personal welfare, or material circumstances. Especially, we pray for Pat Brady, Justin Bird, Gil Gilbert, Bev Gowan, Suzanne Harrison, Carol Harvey, Vincent Hunter, Rudy Martin, Bonnie Martindale, Virginia Musselman, Gray Lamaster, Mary Martin, Richard Stepick, Dorothy Townsend. Father, we pray for your peace in the midst of the unrest in the Middle East. We do ask peace for Jerusalem. Lord, we ask that you would bring justice in the midst of injustice. O oh Lord God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome to St. Andrews. Hello. How y'all doing? You look good. I'm doing all right. Yeah. Hey, if you're visiting with us today, we want to welcome you especially. We're glad you're here. 
we'd love to get to know you. So please come by the welcome desk right through those doors. Or fill out the connection card in the bulletin. If you put that in the offering plate when it comes by, uh, they'll give us a chance to follow up. Say hi. So please do that. Just a few things uh, to bring to your attention today. Several things actually about today. Um, immediately after the service, uh, right out back here at the playground, we've got to stay in play for, for families and kids. Uh, we're going to be grilling hot dogs. We've got Kona Ice. So hang around afterwards. It's a great chance to, uh, to fellowship and uh, spend time together and have fun <clears throat> right after the service. Then a little later, after you stay in play, you can come and see. <laughs> we got the come and see prayer service. Uh, so at 5.30, we've got testimonies. It's a time for people to share ways that God has been at work. We know he is at work, and it's so important that we hear about that and, and, and encourage each other with those stories. Uh, and then at 6 o'clock, prayer and worship. So you can come at 5.30 or 6 uh, for come and see. So stay and play, then come and see. Um, <clears throat> then uh, in terms of opportunities to serve our community, um, uh, an important one that's coming up next month, the beginning of May. <clears throat> Many of you know uh, that we have a deep partnership with Western Hills Elementary School, uh, uh, elementary school here in the community. And um, all year long, uh, the kids are offered this reward. If they, if they behave well throughout the year, the reward is they get a fishing day uh, to go out and spin together. And it's St. Andrews, uh, our volunteers that make that possible. So we need your help to do this. Um, you know, putting worms on hooks and untangling fishing line and probably untangling some more fishing line and probably untangling some more fishing line. You don't have to be a big fisherman, uh, but if you just want to help and, and be president, it's a great opportunity to love these kids. Um, so sign up is right, right around the corner in the, in the narthex there. Bill Bussey uh, would love to sign you up for that. So check out uh, Fishing Day at Western Hills, May 7th or 9th. I'm not sure if the date's official yet. So uh, continuing to talk about missions, Kate Larson, would you come up? Uh, Kate, one of our own, grown up here at St. Andrews, now heading into full-time ministry. Tell us what's going on, Kate. Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Kate Larson, and like Dustin said, I've gone to St. Andrews for a long time since I was seven years old, and it's been so special to grow up as a part of this church community. I went on my first mission trip with St. Andrews when I was 12, and that's where God really started to grow my heart for missions. And now I'm a senior in college at the University of Arkansas, and after I graduate in one month, I'm really excited about that, yeah. I'm going to be going on staff with a ministry called The Traveling Team. So if you don't know much about the traveling team, basically what we do is we travel around the country speaking to college students on their campuses about God's heart for the world. So in my time with the traveling team, I'll get to speak to thousands of college students across the country. And when we're speaking on a campus, we're just really working to help students understand how they can play a personal role in what God's doing all over the world, whether that's through going overseas or praying for the nations or giving to a missionary. We just really want to equip them with tools and connect them with opportunities that can help them be a part of God's global mission. And so ultimately our vision and our goal at the traveling team is that we would get to play a part in raising up this next generation of followers of Jesus to be so passionate about God's name being made known among all nations. So I'm super excited to get to do this job and just so thankful for the generosity of St. Andrews. I am honored to be the second recipient of the Mary Frances King Fund. So I just wanted to say thank you so much to all of you guys whose generosity makes that fund possible. It's been such a blessing to me. I'll start my job with the traveling team in August and most of what I'll be doing from now until then over the next few months will be support raising. I've already started doing it a little bit and I've been so encouraged by the generosity of people even in this room towards me, but I definitely have a long ways to go. So if you'd be interested in hearing more about how you could partner with me financially or in prayer, I'll be out in the narthex after the service. I think there'll be a few people out there, but I'll be at the welcome desk. So come stop by and talk to me and I'd love to tell you more. Thank you so much, Kate. Let's, let's, let's pray for Kate. You can clap first if you want. It's always allowed. Always allowed. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much for Kate and for the way that you have put uh, your heart in her heart and given her this great desire to see people of all kinds come to know you and love you and be changed by you. We pray, Jesus, um, again, grateful for the ministry and, and the way you've grown her up in this place, but we, we pray now as a body, Lord, that you would fill her so powerfully with your Holy Spirit, that you would fan to flame the gifts that you've given her, and you would give her, Lord, um, such blessing and such favor as she goes out. Uh, endurance to travel, or this is a big, long, uh, hard commitment, but we pray that as she goes, you would meet her again and again, and wherever she is, your kingdom would be, and that many others, Lord, would catch a vision 
for how beautiful you are and want to be a part of spreading your love to the nation. So bless her, protect her, and work mightily through her, Jesus. We pray with confidence in your name. Amen. Amen. Proud of you, Kate. All right. Anybody who's having a birthday or an anniversary, please come up here so that we can pray for you. Birthdays, anniversaries, come on down. As they come, reminder that prayer teams will be in that room right over there during communion, and they would love to pray for you. Uh, so if, you have, if you're thinking like, oh, maybe I should go receive prayer, I don't know, just go. It'll be good. All right. It's a big week. All right, you guys know how this works. You just tell me who you are, tell us who you are, and if you want to, how old? Kimberly Cook, 56. <laughs> Connie McCullough, 77. Betsy Nalmer, almost 86. Wednesday. Sadie Summers, 6. Four. Four. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're going to grow up so fast. <laughs> Rowan Forrest, 14. Christian Freeman, seven. Gideon Freeman, 11. Anna Kirk's, 37. Support staff, yeah, I got you. Karen Bird, 69, and holding. Nice. <laughs> Kate Bradley, 12. Tony Davis, 42. Sparks, seven. Maisie, seven. Isaiah Redding, 14. All right, let's pray for these. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up when they fall. In their hearts may thy peace, which passes all understanding, Abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. <clears throat> now let's prepare our hearts as we turn to the table for communion. Precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood 
Lord is here. And his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to, to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched his arms out upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. 
sanctify them by your word and your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as Jesus has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with great thanksgiving.
Search the world, and I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. The man's empty praise, the treasures that fade, I never enough. Turn friends 
better than you. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, sing it out. And there's nothing that's better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Sin runs deep. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. What grace is found is where you are. Where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ. Teach my song, so teach my song to rise to you. When temptation comes my way, and when I cannot stand out for you, Jesus, Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Oh my 
Let us pray to this God whose goodness pursues us always. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now receive this blessing. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be people of courage. Be strong. Do everything in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.
dark veil in that dark veil I fear no will with thee dear Lord beside thy rod and staff thy rod and staff my Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.